What is sensitization and what is shocking a sea slug tell us about PTSD and depression? Stay tuned. If there's one thing my dog Simon hates, it's smoke detectors. The bad beep beeps make loud when you least expect it. He especially hates when the battery in one of them starts to get low and the smoke detector uses its dying gasps to cry out desperately, beep. Then 10 minutes later, beep. Once you play that game of figure out which one it is and replace the batteries, all returns to normal. The interesting part here is how Simon reacts to all of this. The first beep, he's cautious. By the second beep, he's visibly startled. By the third beep, he's trembling in terror as he waits for the robot overlords to overtake and torture us, only to be delivered by the sweet release of death. The stimulus hasn't changed, but his behavior has. This is a kind of behavior called sensitization. It's a form of non-associative learning where the response to a stimulus increases across repeated presentations. Sensitization happens in many situations when you encounter a strong stimulus. Have you ever been in a tickle fight and then a few minutes later someone touches you and you jump a mile in the air? Well, that's sensitization. In the laboratory, you can see sensitization even in animals with very simple nervous systems. For example, the sea slug Aplesia is a good model for studying this kind of learning. It has a behavior that you can easily sensitize, gill withdrawal. On the back of the animal is a delicate gill that it floats out into the water column. When threatened, it withdraws the gill for a period of time and eventually releases it again when it's more likely to be safe. You can measure how long it takes to release the gill back into the water. So imagine we poke the mantle, an area near the gill. It might withdraw the gill for, say, 15 seconds. Next, we give a moderate electric shock to the tail of the animal. If we touch the gill again, this time it stays withdrawn much longer, maybe two minutes or more. In other words, the electric shocks serve to sensitize the gill withdrawal behavior. It's a sensitizing stimulus. Sensitization is an adaptive behavior because it helps you become more alert and more prepared to deal with surprising stimuli in your environment. Think of it as a form of learning that there is danger nearby and that you should be especially vigilant about any changes that happen in your environment. Now this leads us to one of the key differences between sensitization and habituation. Of course, the obvious difference is that in habituation, responding is going down with repeated presentations of the stimulus, whereas in sensitization, responding increases. But another important difference is the specificity of the effect. Habituation is highly stimulus specific. You don't habituate to all stimuli, just that specific target stimulus. Sensitization, on the other hand, tends to sensitize a bunch of different stimuli at once. If you get sensitized while out for a walk at night, you might be equally startled by a car horn or by a cat dashing out of the shadow. It's not specific to just one stimulus. Like habituation, sensitization doesn't last forever. It tends to go away on its own over time. That is, as long as things are working normally. As you know, sometimes our bodies don't work quite like they are supposed to, and a response that is normally adaptive gets out of control and causes pathology. Could an extreme case of sensitization make you more susceptible to mental disorders? In 1992, psychiatrist Robert Post noticed a trend among studies of recurrent affective disorders, where the first episode of the disorder tended to have more stressors associated with it. A patient might go through a series of horrible loss events that started the first wave of depression, but afterward it could be reinstated by smaller stressors. This led Post to argue that stress brings about physiological changes that can become pathological, persisting over the long term and lowering the threshold for recurrence of disorders like depression and PTSD. His 1992 paper has been cited nearly 2,300 times to date and has been highly influential on how we think about stress and recurrent disorders. It's like after an initial traumatic experience, you're sensitized and more likely to encounter problems in the future. That's the basics of sensitization. A sensitizing stimulus increases responsiveness to stimuli over a period of time. 
One question you may be asking at this point is, well, if sensitization and habituation both happen after repeated presentations of a stimulus, how do you know which one you're going to get? That's the topic of my next video, so subscribe and hit the bell if you want to be notified when that one's available. If you're not too sensitized, hit the like button. And until next time, keep thinking. No Simons were harmed in the making of this video. Ooh. <laughs>